So we talk about digital channels. <clears throat> We're basically talking about the web. And the thing is, search engines still matter. And the reason why they matter is when you do a search, you have pretty much, an much announced to the world, I am looking for this. And so, who do you want to talk to? Randomly trying to pick people out or somebody who's already expressed, this is what I want to look at. Mobile, right now, huge fight between Instagram and Snapchat to see who will win there. Also, there's still a lot of advertising done by apps. And of course, everybody's pretty much familiar of all the different channels of social media. Um, when we look at where people are spending their money, and keep in mind, this is uh, percentages of growth. But primarily, display ads still take the lion's share of uh, how people spend their money. Uh, what it comes down to is if you're talking about net, if you're talking about web, Google is king. Google makes their money through search engines and they're dominating. But on the other hand, when you talk about social channels, it's about Facebook. And not only that, but when you're talking about mobile right now, Facebook is winning. And the reason why Facebook is winning is Instagram. Instagram right now is copying off of Snapchat's features and Snapchat can't stop it. And part of it is that Instagram is backed by Facebook and that's why they're growing so easily. When you sit down and think about, okay, if I take three totally different products and one is an app for hairstylists, one is about VR, like physical VR accessories, uh, or if I'm looking for a new software to basically predict how students are going to do so I can help students get better. Uh, when I think about the launch, when I think about the chasm, when I think about growth, three different things. With uh, the haircut, Instagram is very powerful for the simple reason people can actually see the cut. So it's good advertising. On the other hand, when I talk about VR accessories, very limited group. And so all of a sudden Facebook or search engine is potentially a lot more powerful. And so what it comes down to though is I have to relate the value to the customer. What is it they're looking for exactly? Uh, in terms of channels and how much they cost, as you can see, web banner is expensive. Uh, however, it's, it's uh, well targeted. And what's cheap? Email. That's the thing. Email, it might be spam. It might be annoying and everything else. However, it's so easy to send out so many of them. Again, you're throwing a million lines into the ocean. The thing is, a lot of companies, surprisingly enough, still don't have digital strategies. And that's why there's a lot of opportunity in the services business. Seriously, how, how many websites do you click on and you think, oh man, what a bad website? Because <laughs> people don't know what they're doing, even though all the tools are out there, all the instruction is out there to do it yourself. And so... Some of the other issues that also drive the sage is about education, that people may not know about things or may not know how to do it. And also there's a lot of complexity involved. There's a lot of parts. And what people are afraid of is risk. Uh, people understand knocking on doors. People don't necessarily understand web anal anal uh, analytics. Uh, and this is why these techniques tend to favor the young, because this is what you're being brought up on and your parents aren't. Right now, actually, if you go to this website, they update this every year. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, but there are over 1,900 companies that are working in marketing technology. So as you can see, there is no lack of people that you can go to for help. In terms of the funnel, uh, and you look at the different uh, methods, whether they're outbound or inbound. Uh, display and native ads are basically, and those are ads just uh, built in naturally into a website. That's outbound. Essentially, you don't know, you're just hoping somebody who sees it will click on it. Inbound is about drawing people in. For example, the people you know who are searching, the people you know have an interest on social media. But the funnel, is essentially the same for both. Uh, in terms of mobile, 
One of the big challenges about mobile is the thing about the technology is you have limited display size. This is why people have in a band that everybody hasn't gone over to mobile. The other thing about mobile is you have limited bandwidth, you have limited processing speed. What you do on a website, you don't necessarily can do on mobile. And so you have to take that into consideration. Uh, however, 59% of the decision makers, influencers use cell phones to get their information. Uh, and that's because you always have your phone with you. Uh, in terms of what trends mobile has, actually they're now they're talking about 5G, so sheesh, it's already becoming antiquated. But what it comes down to is, is the infrastructure going to be there? Because as things get smaller and all, electronics performance proportionally becomes worse. And so uh, the thing is, there's no slowdown in sight. Mobile is the place to be, and that's why Facebook is well positioned in terms of it. Online marketing, these are the elements. You're all familiar with these uh, different techniques, whether they're blogs. Uh, QR codes are becoming uh, more popular. Um, search engine, uh, web optimization. In terms of search, it's about uh, SEM, SEO, and SERP. And that's your search engine marketing, and that's your keyword driven in effect. How do you match up so you should pop up on their search? Search engine optimization is basically the ranking of web pages, and then SERP is about the search engine results page. Uh, the thing is 80% of the people will typically go with the first, uh, the highest, not the ads, but the number one topic that comes up in your search. And so there are all kinds of tools like Google AdWords that will help you link to that. Uh, in terms of being in services, people look at pay-per-clicks, CPM, which is cost per thousand impressions. And so you can read the rest of it. But essentially, these are some of the metrics that people are looking at. Um, the thing about CEO, I mean SEO, is that you want to improve the odds people can find you. And you do that through direct linking, whether they're blogs, whether they're comments. Uh, comments are very important because your page ranking goes up when people make more comments about what you're doing. Uh, this is why you have Q&A sessions and so on. But the big thing is you want to be linked out into the world. That's what's key here. Uh, in terms of internal SEO, what is it that I can do within my web page? And so, it's about creating links, having optimizing my images and everything else. Uh, the thing is, if I'm doing mobile, will that picture translate well to when I shrink it down? The thing is, you have a specific aspect ratio you have to deal with. This is part of the reason why um, I think Snapchat is doing what they call vertical video, and that's that you're used to looking at movies and everything this way. They're trying to create them this way. Uh, but different sites have different advantages, and that's at Facebook. It's about the sheer number of users. Twitter, uh, because I have viral effects. And Pinterest, because it's very, very focused. It's like, what is that pin about? Uh, games. The thing about a game is it's a rich experience. You are immersed in something, and so they have your attention. Uh, the thing is, especially with all these freemium models, one of the frustrations of games, though, is games is a lot about visual detail, and you just really can't get it. Content marketing, and this is one of the two biggest things of the age we live in, content and influencer. The thing is, content marketing at its heart is about creating bait. What can I create that people are going to be interested in that will draw them in? whether it's great pictures, whether it's articles and blogs and information, uh, whether it's something I can create, something personal for people. That's what content marketing is about. And what it does is content marketing affects the entire sales spectrum. Anything about that, anything in those steps, you can use content marketing to help juice it up. Uh, in terms of analytics, Again, uh, it's data-driven. 
uh, in terms of content marketing, here are some examples. Freemium, get people to join for free. Enticement, free shipping on something you don't traditionally connect with free shipping. Um, education, you can, they're going to give you education on things you, you need to know. And for it, they're going to get your information. Uh, referral. Referral is what made Dropbox. Dropbox tried to do search engine. It was too expensive. Uh, they were actually losing money, so they went to a referral program, giving away free excess space if you refer to a friend. And they took off and did well. And even somebody like Tesla has a referral program. The thing about content marketing is it's not always about sales. Again, I want shares, likes, and comments. Comments because it's good for my search engine marketing, but shares and likes because it expands my network. Network here, network here, if they share, dun, 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 now I'm twice as big or even more than that. And so they give people free samples because they want reviews. Every time I buy something on Amazon, I get these dumb emails from people saying, oh, did you like the product? Can you go back and comment? It's like, oh my God, I don't like you as much as I did before. Um, what drives digital channels? What industry are you in? What price points are you talking about? Uh, naturally, if you're a luxury item, like for example, one of my students was selling um, homes worth more than like $800,000 in the Phoenix area. You just see that website, it's absolutely beautiful. But on the other hand, if you're asking somebody to spend a million dollars on a home, uh, do you really want something cheap? And so these are kind of the things that drive your digital channel. And the impression you leave affects your brand, what they think about it. Now, one aspect about this digital buying, and digital marketing, is something called the long tail. And that's that there's something called the 80-20 rule. And that's that 80% of my sales will come from 20% of my products. And that's generally true for a physical store. However, because of Bezos and a number of other people, they figured out that it's a heck of a lot cheaper to sell things from a warehouse than it does a physical store. Not only that, but it's about square footage. So it's about square footage, I get more stuff going vertical. Yes, they before stores are driven by. And part of the reason why is in a store where you're walking around, I mean, you can't have a product on a third story. You're never going to see the darn thing. Uh, what happened is that Bezos figured out that because it costs so little, especially digital products, I mean, what's it costing you to have 10 million songs versus 1 million songs? Well, it's just storage capacity, and bits are cheap. Um, so what they found out is that that 80% in the rest of the tail can match what your top 20% is doing in terms of revenue. And that's the thing. It's um, Bad Finger did this on Baby Blue. You know, how many downloads they get a year? A couple of hundred. But then all of a sudden, that song is played at the conclusion of Baking, baking, baking Breaking Bad, that all of a sudden there were like 100,000 downloads of it. And so this is what allows you to do. Uh, to be able to have a lot of products and also to be able to sell it for a lot. The thing about long tail is there are things that prevent it, such as if you don't have enough information about all these kajillion of products, uh, do you have distribution that can do it? Uh, in terms of niches, what you also see is that a lot of niches start to come together when you can do this long tail. And finally, to wrap up, digital marketing. Um, one marketer said, oh my god, you're not teaching the four P's on you, the four P's are dead. But essentially when you look at digital marketing and talk about price, it's not about price because digital products are so cheap to produce, it's still about perception and perception pricing. Distribution is no longer about bricks and mortar anymore, it's about access. What channels do I want to access? How am I going to download this stuff? 
It's no longer about products. We want to talk about solutions. And finally, in terms of promotion, it's not about promoting and banners and handing out flyers anymore. It's about education. That's the nature of digital. We're now in the age of, especially with content marketing and everything else, about educating. They're right and they're wrong, meaning what digital actually is, is a subset of the four Ps. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn the four Ps. For the simple reason, what if I'm not doing a digital product? What if I'm doing a physical product? Not only that, but in terms of price, you do have a price point based on profit. Because I can figure out, even if I'm selling a digital product, I still have eight employees, I still have rent and things like that. I still have an associated cost with running my business. So if this is my expected volume in certain buckets, I set price based on that. Uh, in terms of distribution, again, if you have a physical product, you still have supply chain to worry about. And guess what? If you're selling to a middleman in, uh, in there, going with the reseller route, you're still going to have to manage those relationships. And so for me to totally abandon all that, that would be irresponsible. Yes, we live in a digital world, but we still live in a physical world also. And this is why I tried to blend the modern stuff with the traditional stuff. And so the story about digital media is it's, I mean, digital media is that it's cheap, it's accessible, and you have opportunities to break down boundaries that you didn't have before.